is finished Newcastle 4 Tottenham 0 at St James's Park an absolute rout in uh, which Tottenham have been embarrassed against a very much depleted Newcastle team Tottenham with pretty much close to or if not their first 11 out there um, absolutely embarrassed on the day uh, it looked but in terms of going through the game I mean it started off evenly enough you know we were probably we had a few chances Werner missed a couple of really good presentable opportunities Newcastle were looking a real threat on the counter but it looked like quite an even game but Tottenham's defensive frailties reared its ugly head and we were the masters of shooting ourselves in the in our foot weren't we well masters of our own downfall I should say pretty much gave them two goals right from uh, you know I don't know what it was 20 25 minutes in uh, we didn't take our chances before that we managed actually quite well to silence the crowd first 10 15 minutes then as soon as we got conceded a goal and then conceded the second straight away crowd on top of us they, you could see in the body language, the Tottenham players not able to deal with it, still not able to deal with it. No leaders on that pitch. That's the first time I've said this, this, that this season. No leaders on that pitch. And I really think that's because Son was actually partly responsible for at least one of those goals, maybe even two. And as a result, he wasn't able to do anything. I mean, he's not a shouty leader anyway. But we were honestly, that was just embarrassing. Like I said it I, on the watch along, I've said the word embarrassing maybe 60 times. Like. The way we have to go into the way we defend set pieces again. Like, I think they only scored from one set piece, but they might have scored from 10 set pieces today. It's embarrassing. They do not jump for balls. They do not challenge for balls. They do not block runs. They are like under 10s compared to everybody else in the Premier League at defending set pieces. And next up, we've got Arsenal, who are the best at it. Yeah, and I think... Oh, sorry. Uh, 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 I, I think today as well is just... You follow this performance up from, you know, you think about the Fulham game, which was uh, two away games ago. You have the Brighton game, which was um, you know, at the back end of um, December time. But we clearly have this tendency of just being completely overawed by the opposition, not knowing how to deal with it defensively. Like sometimes when you're up against it, like you, yes, oh, I completely get what Ange is trying to do. We keep playing the same way. I get it. But sometimes when you're up against it, you have to have some sort of way of batting down the hatches, riding a storm, and just getting through periods so that you allow yourself those periods to dominate again. And it seems as though in these kind of games, we haven't, we can't, we haven't managed to get into a situation where we're able to just keep the opposition quiet for a bit, get you know, get everyone behind the ball, get everyone defending in the proper situations. It seems it's almost as if like once we're up against it, we completely just crumble, allow the opposition to dominate, allow them to just create as many chances as they want, essentially. And when we're off our game a bit, the opposition just find it so, so easy to create as many chances as they want. And that was another uh, example of that today. I think we need, I think we need, I said it after uh, the last game, we need a, a brilliant number six who is able to spot and smell danger and help out because, you know, we're leaving two on two at the back, but today against Isak and Barnes and uh, Gordon, just, they made Romero and Van der Ven look average, and they need help. They need a third. When we were brilliant under Pochettino, a lot of it was because in the early days, Eric Dyer would sit in as a third centre half from defensive midfield, like when we were building up play, but also when we were being broken against. And that doesn't happen anymore. We don't have the stability when we're being broken against, especially against teams with pace and who are clinical. And they were clinical today. Yeah. And. and, and We've got to learn from this for next season. I do get it. I still feel confident that Ange is saying, this is how we're going to do it. We're learning how to be like this. But next season, he has to take some learnings from these beatings that we're getting. Yeah, and I think at the beginning of the season, you would have expected it would have happened. The problem that the, the issue is is happening now, like near the end of the season, when we should have had our most progression kind of thing. And now we're taking a few batterings like against Fulham and uh, and today. And like you would have expected it, maybe it would have, happened, would have happened earlier on. But clearly this is still a team on a learning curve. But today was just pathetic. It was pathetic. It was and, pathetic. And, and, and there's no other way of putting it. It wasn't a t like... Obviously, when we're on the ball, I do see us trying things a lot. We're trying to, to do things, but it's almost as if in, when we're getting hit in the transition, we're making it way, way, way too easy for, for the opposition to just one long ball in behind and they're in on goal. It's a one-on-one -on -one situation. And we're so weak in these defensive transitions, really, really weak. A doggy getting muscled off the ball. Anthony Gordon, Porro not looking up and just giving it straight to, um, straight to Gordon as well, who ended up scoring. Mm. Um, like, you we're, we're you not strong get, enough. You don't get second chances in games against the top six you know against the top eight 
And if you make a mistake like your doggy did in terms of not, there's one thing being up, out muscled, right? He'd actually done the hard work. I'm talking about the first goal here. He'd done the hard work. He'd got his body in between um, Gordon and the ball. And then Gordon, who's much smaller than him, out muscles him. And at that point, that is almost like where the biggest mistake is. He's got to take him down. Mm -hmm. At that point, you take him down. Yeah. So that's like a mistake followed by naivety. You take your yellow card and you say, fine, it's nil-nil. You don't get a second chance. One goal goes in at St. James's and you know what's going to happen. The crowd are up. And then we, we double down on our mistake because Pedro Porro does something completely mental, which is clearly because of the Ange playbook, which is like, even if you go a goal, a goal down, still try and play the hardest ball you can. Still try and be the bravest you can on the ball. But I get it. If, if that's in terms of this season about, about the philosophy, if that's about mindset, I get it. But next season, they have to be learning from things and be like, okay, if you concede a goal at one of the big, the big grounds where the, uh, the crowd is up, just hack it into Rose Ed straight away. Get your team back. What did Newcastle do brilliantly all day? They slowed us down and they got their, their, themselves back in shape. We mm. never made a chance. We never made a single like guilt edge chance because they slowed us down. They took their fouls. They made their fouls where they had to. They took a booking if they had to. I don't even think they got booked. They actually mm -hmm. managed their professional fouls so well they didn't even get booked. And then they were ten behind the ball every mm -hmm. time, every time. Yeah, they didn't get any bookings. It was, uh, it was schoolboy stuff from Spurs today. We played into their hands. We allowed them to play direct. Their fans don't care that they're playing direct because they've won four nil and they'll say we've got loads of injuries. And well, look. look they're still 10 points behind us, so they've had a shit season. But we've got to learn from this stuff because teams like that, teams like Chelsea, teams like Man United, if not at the latter, day, latter end of this season, next season, they will be better than they are now. So we need to improve a lot. And I think more and more as we go along, we need to buy a brilliant six, a Polinia, someone who sniffs it out because we're in, we are too open. It's too, it's too dangerous every time we lose the ball. Yeah, and but the, the, you know, to what you said, like sometimes we concede a goal, and we let the you know the, the occasion get to like. I remember early in the season, you know, we went to the Emirates, went one 0 down early, and the crowd were on top of us, but we kept our composure. And there's just see, this is such a difference to that team that we saw early in the season. And I don't know what has changed, why we we are so different. Um, but today we completely crumbled. Like at that that third goal, just after half time, Son loses it on the edge of on the edge of the opposition box. And then just one long ball, one long ball straight over the top. And Isaac is one on one, one long ball. That's all they needed. We've got to be fair and we've got to be equal and we've got to say it as it is. Son had his, one of his worst games I've ever seen for Tottenham Hotspur today. And I'm glad that Ange took him off. He's a legend for this club. He's our one elite player, world-class player, but he had a stinking game. He could not hold the ball up. He got it caught under his feet all the time. He made the wrong decision every time and he was responsible for that goal. It yeah. was, because it, the way we play, you've got to be as careful when you're holding the ball up as you are anywhere else on the pitch, because we're not, we don't have any defenders. We literally like, you know, like you said, caught under a, a high ball. So you got to, you know, I give him enough credit when he plays well, Sonny, but he had a terrible game today. And I'm really pleased that Ange was brave enough to take him off. Yeah, terrible, terrible performance. And that was a bit of a statement, you know, taking off your captain on 55 minutes, which uh, never really rarely happens to Son. Shows Ange is willing to, you know, make a tough call there. But we're 3-0 down already. So, you know, you could even argue we're saving some for future weeks, probably, because oh, the game was over. Off, uh, it's true. We do have two weeks off. Yeah, look. It's not. I don't know how many more ways I can say how much of a shambles it was because, you know, I thought Fulham was bad and this was even worse because even at least Fulham, they've got like a, their full strength team. It's always a tough place to go. But it's looking at uh, Newcastle's team today. Murphy, a right back. You got Kraft playing at centre back. You got Anderson and Longstaff in centre mid, and not only. You know, were they com uh, competing with? I say, battering us. They're destroying us with a depleted team. And I, uh, can I say something? I'm baffled. Actually. If if you were as bad at your job as Mila Jedinak is at, at his job at being the set piece defensive coach, you'd lose your job. Yeah. You would lose your job. Now, I'm not saying he needs to lose his job because he's an overall coach as well, right? But. It is embarrassing that Ange Postecoglou has come out and said, I don't believe in, in set-piece coaches. And then we're that bad. The only way you can say that is if you're actually good at it. Mm -hmm. And we're terrible at defensive and attacking set-pieces. So that needs to be something we learn from too. Somebody needs to, somebody needs to get him to change his mind. <laughs> he needs to come out and say I was wrong. It was pathetic today. They had 14, 15 corners. I think they had a pretty much a chance from each one. And then from the 15th corner, you think, OK, at least one maybe will keep out and they get, they get the chance and they score from it and make it 4-0 yeah. late on. And that, that goal from the corner was absolutely coming all day they had about 
10 chances from corners. They didn't get, uh, luckily for us, didn't go in the back of the net. But the last one, they did manage to Can get you it. Imagine and how easy it's going to be for Saliba and Gabriel. And then when we play Liverpool, Virgil van Dijk against the way we defend those corners. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Still alive. Well, we have a tough, tough um, run in now in the next few games. Obviously, people may be thinking the next few games, looking forward to it because, you know, we've been quite good against the big sides this season. But off the back of that, you can't help but be worried now with Arsenal coming to Tottenham Stadium. Now, then away to Chelsea and Liverpool, which our away form is absolutely in sh- uh, shatters at the moment. And, and, in tatters, I should say, uh, at the moment. Then you've got Burnley and then Man City. So some really, really tough games. We actually drop out of the top four today after that result. Hopefully, Ars- well, I would say hopefully Arsenal could do us a favour, but I don't want them winning the league, so I don't want them winning, but with, with, with uh, fifth at the moment, definitely not guaranteed Champions League. We'll be looking at that top four. So Arsenal um, will play Villa tomorrow with uh, hopefully they, they do us a favour. But at the moment, uh, definitely this top four ain't going to be easy with the run we have. Not Tell you what, you're, you're a Newcastle fan now. You're looking at that 10 points with the run in they've got, and they think, they're thinking, oh, we might, Why be not? To, we might be able to get in the top five ourselves. Oh, well, that is... But nobody will give it. Nobody will give Newcastle as easy a game as we just did. No, that's nobody for sure. Nobody will be as naive as we were. So I, I'm know, just they, baffled. They, I'm baffled how easy we made it. Like, how it's such an easy game for Newcastle. We have something fighting for something this season. We're fighting for that top four. We should be the ones really in the ascendancy, and Newcastle completely blast away. I'm just baffled about how easy we made it for them. 